So in our previous video we created our first gates over in our auth service provider. Now I'll show you the advantage of doing it in the provider is that you can, you can use it multiple times across many controllers and many actions. But there are some other advantages to doing it this way as well. And that is we can apply a gate to a view or we can also apply it in middleware. So I'm just going to create a new gate. I'm just going to copy this one here. And let's call this one manage users. And this is just going to be like a generic high level check to see whether the user is an admin or an author. So we need to change this has any roles. Remember we created this on our user model has any roles here so we can pass an array of roles. So I'm just going to say for this, are they an admin or an author? And if they're either of these, this will return true. Now in our last video, we applied our gates inside of the controller methods on whichever one we wanted to control. But for this, we're going to show you how to do it in middleware. So if you come over to your routes folder in the root of the project and open up web, and you can remember we've got our root group here for all of our admin controllers. So what we could do, we could apply the middleware here and then any route inside of this group will automatically have that middleware applied. Or we can apply it to individual routes inside of the group. Now we've only got one in this group, so it doesn't really make a difference. So up here in the route before the group, we can just call the middleware. Then we need to pass in what middleware we want to run. So there's a built one into Laravel called can. And to run this, all we need to do is can, and then we need to give it a colon, and then the name of our gate. And remember, we called that manage users. So now anytime any route inside of this group is run, our manage users gate is going to be run. So this is going to run and it's going to say, is the current logged in user an admin or an author? If it's not, then it'll just return false, which in Laravel defaults to a 403 error code. So to try this out, we need to put our user back in. Remember, we deleted them in a previous video. So I'm just going to open up a new terminal. Sorry, the text is really small here. But all I'm typing is php artisan db seed. And that run our seed as we created earlier in the series. And it will populate our user, author, and admin again. So let's refresh the page now. And you see we've got our generic user back. Perfect for testing. Now you notice we're logged in as admin and we can refresh this page and everything works fine. But now let's try and log in as the generic user. So that was just user at user.com and the password was password. Let's log in. So now if we come over to here and we try and access the user management page, you can see it gives us a 403. And that's because this middleware is running and it's doing the manage users gate check. And over in the manage users gate check, it's checking if the user is an admin or an author. And obviously our generic user isn't. So it's just giving them a 403. So if we just log out of the generic user, I'm just going to log in as the authors. That's author at author.com and the password is password. So let's go to user management and the author can access this page because they are obviously have a role of author. So I've logged in as an author because I want to show you something else now with the views. So at the moment, the author can't edit or delete users because we put a gate on their methods in the previous video. So let's just try and edit. And you'll see the page just reloads and it's back here. So it would be better if we just didn't show these actions if the user hasn't got permission to use them. Now here's another advantage of using gates. So over in our view, so we'll come to resources, views, admin, users, index. And down here we have our two buttons. So like in the middleware, Laravel had a can method we could call. You can also use the can method within Blade. So here before the edit button, Let's call the blade directive can, so it's at can, and the can just expects what gate you want to use. So let's have a look. So we want to call our edit users gate, which is expecting the user to be an admin. So let's put in here edit users, and then after that button finishes, we just need to do at end can. So anything in here only displays if the edit users gate passes. So let's give this a refresh, and you see now for our author user, this edit action has gone. So we also built a gate for delete users. Let's just add this into our view. So we can do can again, and we call that gate delete users. And obviously at the end of the button, we just need to end the can. Now let's refresh the page, and you see our delete button has now also gone. But let's say in the future you change your mind and you want the author to be able to edit users. Now this is the power of using gates and having your logic in one place. So if we come over to our auth service provider again, 
and we'll come down to our edit. So we're currently saying, do they have the role of admin? So let's change this now to has any roles and we can pass it in an array here. And we're going to say, do they have a role of admin or author? Now if we save and refresh, you can see the author now can view the edit button. And also if we click edit, they can now edit a user's roles. So making that one change in the auth service provider filters down to our controllers and our views. So this gives us great flexibility in changing roles and permissions through the entire application. So one last thing we probably want to do as well in the drop down here is show a user management link. And we probably don't want to show that if they can't manage the users. And that's just for our generic users. So let's add that in. So over in our views, we can load up our layouts and app.blade. And here we have our user management link. So again, we'll just use the cam method and we'll call our manage users gate. And obviously we just need to end this cam as well. And then for the author, you can still see this. Now let's log in as our generic user. And now if you click on the drop down, the generic user can't even see the link for user management. That's just how we wanted it.